The WHO had a health summit in 2011, which is only the second they've ever he held World Health Summit. And the first was for HIV AIDS, which shows how much importance they're attaching to the current epidemic of diabetes and other non-communicable diseases. And at the end of that summit, they set the target of 25 by 25. And what that means is that by the year 2025, they want a 25% reduction in mortality from the four commonest non-communicable diseases, which is cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancer, and chronic lung disease. Now that is a hugely ambitious target. Um, and it's not going to be achieved just by pharmaceutical companies developing better and better drugs for these conditions. If we're going to reduce mortality on that scale, particularly considering that the burden of these diseases is in developing countries, not in affluent countries, so expensive drugs are not going to even be available, the only way we can actually reduce that uh, mortality is prevention. Uh, and also early detection, screening and management from an early stage of disease. Because one of the reasons that increases the mortality locally is that people present with advanced stage diabetes and they've already got complications before they even come for help. We also need to improve the services to our patients to make them more effective. Knowing the challenges our patients face, it means they need to be accessible and low cost. And our clinicians need to be providing consistent, evidence-based quality care. The epidemiology of diabetes and hypertension is actually very interesting. I mean, there are probably five main driving forces. The first is just the transition in people's lifestyles. That obviously, we're a developing country. Urbanization is happening quickly. People are changing what they eat. You know, you go to ShopRite on a Saturday afternoon and you see people putting processed foods into their shopping trolleys. They go out into the car park, they get into a car and drive away. I mean, this is very different from a traditional lifestyle. Different food, different levels of exercise, and, and people are getting fatter. I mean, you look around and you see quite a lot of people who are overweight now. And not just overweight adults, but overweight kids. And, and weight gain and sedentary lifestyle are strong risk factors for diabetes. The second factor is that we have an ageing population. Again, these are good things, they're indicators of socio-economic development, but they bring with them certain diseases and conditions that, that come from being older. And uh, at the moment in Malawi, our life expectancy has increased by 16 years in the last 10 years. And if you live to be 60, the adjusted life expectancy is now 77. And, you know, diabetes is very much a disease of middle and old age. Uh, the average age in our diabetic clinic is 55. So they're going to have lots more people living to be old enough to get these, these problems. And then the other, the other risk factors for the epidemic are things, those, the first two, the nutritional transition and the ageing transition, are worldwide and will equally affect people in Europe and America. But we also have risk factors which are unique for our setting, uh, which complicate the epidemic and make it even worse locally than it might have been already in Europe and America. And those complicating factors, one is the issue of low birth weight children. Because if you're a child that's born with a low birth weight, it's usually because you've had a sick mother uh, due to chronic malaria, poor nutrition or HIV. And in utero, that fetus will have been fighting for survival. And there are various hormonal changes that happen in utero to these stressed fetuses, which means they're born tough <laughs> and they're little survivors. But as they age, as they become adults, they're at much increased risk of non-communicable diseases, including diabetes and hypertension. And in Malawi, 50% of children are born with a low birth weight. So half of our population are already programmed to have an increased risk of diabetes and hypertension. Um, and it links, in a way, between the 25-25 objectives and the Millennium Development Goals, because if we can improve maternal health, we will actually reduce our prevalence of diabetes and hypertension. Another factor which is locally very, very relevant is the epidemic of HIV. Um, HIV increases your risk. Having HIV itself, the viral infection, even if you're not taking medication, increases your risk of developing diabetes and hypertension probably due to chronic inflammatory changes in the body because chronic inflammatory changes lead to insulin resistance and insulin resistance is one of the contributory factors to diabetes. In addition, ARV drugs also increase your risk of diabetes, primarily again acting through insulin resistance. And if you're on a combination of an NNRTI and a PI, 
which is a very common combination, certainly it's our second line medication in Malawi, your risk of developing diabetes is threefold increased. And then the final factor, which is locally relevant, which again is unique and absolutely nothing we can do about it, is that the number of genes that put you at risk of type 2 diabetes are more prevalent in the local population. If you look at a world map um, of diabetes prevalence genes, or diabetes risk genes, let me say, sub-Saharan Africa, the populations locally, have very high genetic risk. So if you have a high genetic risk, you only need a small environmental change for the diabetes to come out. And I think that's quite relevant. If you look at our diabetic clinic, the average body mass index is 27. Now, 27 is overweight, but it's not hugely obese. So our diabetic population are not really fat. They're just a little bit overweight. If you went to an American diabetic clinic, they have a much lower genetic risk. So they have to get fatter before the diabetes will come out. And the average diabetic American is much fatter than the average diabetic Malawian. And this is bad luck. I mean, with all our other risk factors, just also have a high genetic risk, which is something we can't control, is really just very bad luck.